So it's been nearly a year since I've moved to Linux. I'm not gonna lie, it was a bumpy ride, but I think I've finally reached where I want to be with the OS. There was a bit of a learning curve throughout the year. Along the way, I have been distro hopping even after the previous video when I said I wasn't going to. Funny story, I said I didn't need to switch to Fedora and guess what I ended up doing? More on that later. This video is going to conclude my series of videos on my experience with Linux. As much as I enjoy learning new things about the system and how it changed the way I use computers, this isn't a Linux channel. I want to get back to working on my games and talking about them instead. I'll probably mention Linux here and there as I go, but it won't be the center of the conversation. So the last time I left the rest of you, I was on Manjaro. There was this whole ordeal about Manjaro being very sloppy with their expired security certificates, but that wasn't the real reason why I moved. As many pointed out in the last video that Manjaro isn't our Linux. I never understood why they would say that given that both use the Arch User Repository or AUR until I found out the hard way that AUR was not built for Manjaro. Most of the software there was user submitted to work specifically on Arch Linux and in many ways not by the official sources. While some may potentially post sketchy versions of the software for nefarious reasons, thankfully I did not experience that, but the updates were at the mercy of these users. I was locked from using certain software because whatever version I was using needed to be updated. And some programs felt like more of wishful thinking than running software. But my biggest problem of them all was that it seemed like most of the AOR was hosted by GitHub. Nothing wrong with GitHub. It's just that my works network has it blocked so in many cases it was impossible for me to update unless I took my laptop back home or used my phone as a hotspot. I'm not bashing AUR at all here. I'm sure many of you are using it perfectly fine without the problems I faced. When teamed with Manjaro's package manager, it is still the easiest and quickest way to get software in and out of a computer I've ever experienced. I sort of miss the simplicity and speed of Pac-Man on Manjaro. Fedora's software manager out of the box is very slow in comparison. But hey, at least anything I install is specifically made for Fedora and it actually works and configuring it speeds up things significantly. I still think Manjaro is great. I specifically like the little modifications they did to GNOME to make it stand out from the rest. They were subtle and didn't get in the way of actually using the OS. Speaking of GNOME, it is what made my transition from Manjaro to Fedora quite painless. Fedora uses a vanilla version of GNOME and they tend to use the latest version of it. I installed Fedora on most of my systems except for the NVIDIA based machines. I don't know if I installed the wrong drivers or what, but for some reason Fedora acted strange on them. After being told that there was a gaming-centric modified version of Fedora out there called Nabara, I thought I'd give it a go. I figured that if it's tuned for gaming, they probably sorted out a few of the problems that I had with NVIDIA. And from the get-go, it asked if it can install the NVIDIA drivers, which made it much easier for me by not worrying about the version needed. I can't say it's perfect. There were some odd hiccups here and there, but the machine now works a little better than it did with vanilla Fedora. I would like to upgrade to something by AMD or try one of Intel's new discrete GPUs. In terms of software, I mentioned that there were programs that I couldn't get to run as well as I hoped on Linux compared to Windows. And that, sadly, is still the case. For a short period of time, I was having a really good time using No Machine as a replacement for Parsec. It wasn't anywhere near as light or clean as Parsec, but when working on the game, it managed to work great. Sadly, any mouse control based games like first person shooters didn't look too hot on this thing. But gaming on it was completely secondary, so I didn't really bother looking into that much. I ended up just relying on having the hardware in person rather than streaming. Parsec was far more discreet and less clunky. I still couldn't figure out how to get Scrivener running on Linux, so I decided to take a look at Obsidian. I really liked its mind map structure. It really makes you look at things differently when writing. It really helps with world building and timelines, but it lacks the tools Scrivener has. I also have a really big issue with Obsidian not allowing me to use my files off of Dropbox on my iOS devices. Scrivener had no problem with that, and neither did IA Writer, which I use to write the script for these videos. I guess I'll just rely on Scrivener on my iOS devices until I perfectly figure out how to use Obsidian. Now there are two more distros that I have been using very recently but neither are for work and productivity. I recently bought an Aya Neo Air Pro, which will be getting its own video down the line. It came with Windows 11 out of the box and I was ready to give it another chance, thinking I'll just stomach it until Aya Neo releases their own build of Linux, 
which is supposed to be very soon. Windows 11 took four gigabytes worth of RAM for no reason. Ran the system pretty hot and the INEO software was buggy as hell. At that point, I decided to look around and see what other OS I can install instead. I read somewhere that someone managed to get the Steam Deck version of SteamOS available for other systems. This was way before the new update. I gave it a go and it didn't exactly cooperate very well. I was considering installing a super light modified version of Windows 11 called Ghost Spectre, but I couldn't get past the installation phase. What did work for me was two Linux distros, Batocera and Chimera OS. Batocera I was a little familiar with because I've been playing around with it for a few months before getting the handheld. It's this build of Linux that comes with a library of emulators ready and ready to go. All you need to do is place the system's BIOS and ROMs in their designated folders and you're golden. And it's no slouch, this emulation library supports up to Wii U and PlayStation 3, if the system handles it. If that's not enough, there's also Steam and unofficial support for Xbox 360. Though the problem was that for some reason, the version of Steam available for Batocera was not launching properly for me. I had a system that ran every old system near perfect, but Steam kept force closing whenever I tried to launch it. And I really did get the system to clear my Steam backlog. I backed up my Batocera library and installed it on an external drive more on that in a future video, and move to the next OS which is where I settled, Chimera OS. And oh boy, let me tell you about Chimera OS. It's an Arch Linux based distro specifically made for controller input. The moment you boot up, you are greeted with Steam in big picture mode, the interface used in Steam Deck, which makes it even better. It even supports emulation, which looks really nice with all the games displaying individually in the Steam library. The system is light and rarely ever gets toasty even when playing heavier games. It's not perfect, it never is, but I will leave the Chimera OS setbacks for the INEO Air Pro video that I'll be doing next. To conclude, what I think about Linux as a system is that it has its quirks. As much more welcoming it is for newcomers than it was in the past, you still need to work to make it perfect for your use case. But when it works, it really is hard to go back to whichever OS you came from. I still use Windows at work, and I do have to readjust to the Windows interface to get things done. GNOME made me work twice as fast in many regards, and Windows makes me feel like I have two left feet. I probably will not go back to Windows, ever. Roses Will Rise is a turn-based strategy RPG with visual novel elements. While the main game is free, it's supported by my generous patrons. You too can support me by going to my Patreon, and if you'd rather support me with a one-time payment, you can buy Roses Will Rise on my Itch.io. You don't need to buy the game to play it, but supporting me will give you a bunch of goodies. And thank you for watching.